Hello everybody, it is Thursday, April 26th in the year of the Apocalypse 2012, and of course we're noting that so far the Apocalypse hasn't happened yet, but it could very shortly if the news <laughs> I want to talk about today is any indicator. Uh, first of all, an announcement. Uh, tomorrow night, Friday the 27th, we are having a members vid chat. It will be at the usual time, 8 p.m. Central Time. So hope to see everybody there. Email me your questions. I've already got one set of questions from uh, somebody way over in the United Kingdom. So we're going to be talking about some interesting things. Uh, Daniel and I are going to record some more uh, members uh, dialogues for the members area tonight. But anyway, with that announcement out of the way, I want to uh, refer you to an article which I'll link on the website because this is yet another chapter in our ongoing saga of all of the fake bearer bonds out there. All right, and uh, this one was put out by ABC News. I'll I'll link the article for you, and it's very quick, uh, very short article. I'll read it to you and point out some things that I think are rather unique. <laughs> anyway, here we go. The article says, <clears throat> Two trillion in fake U.S. bonds seized. That's the title. And then it comes, its uh, dateline is from Manila in the Philippine Islands. And the article begins, quote, Officials said today they have seized more than two trillion in counterfeit U.S. Federal Reserve bonds and arrested one suspect in the southern Philippines. Police also showed reporters stacks of counterfeit Japanese yen and Argentine peso notes in various denominations a few fake $1 bills and some other currencies seized Saturday. Police and staff from the U.S. Embassy arrested a Filipino man in the southern city of Cagayan de Oro with the falsified currencies and U.S. bonds along with German and Argentine bonds, a total counterfeit haul of $2,157,044,400,000 dollars. The fakes were of very good quality, but some of the bond denominations do not exist, said Philip, or pardon me, said David Pop, a U.S. Treasury Department representative. The U.S. bonds totaling more than two trillion were in denominations ranging from tens of thousands of dollars to five hundred million dollars. Pop said the large bonds may have been meant for a major lost treasure scam. Quote, very frequently these fraudsters weave a tale that there's these long lost Federal Reserve bonds hidden away or found in a plane crash, unquote, Pop told a news conference, unquote. All right, so <laughs> let's look at what we have. Number one, we have the story of the treasure and the plane crash in the Philippines. All right. Now, the two things to note here are, first of all, this is a reference to Operation Golden Lily, once again, the Japanese operation to literally plunder Asia of all of its bullion, of all of its precious gems, coins, currency, everything. Uh, much of this was, as most of you probably know, stashed in the Philippines uh, during the 1940s as Japan was beginning to lose the war. They could no longer risk transporting all of this loot to Japan directly, so they buried it at various locations throughout the Philippine Islands. This was an operation that was headed by uh, Japanese Prince Chichibu and also the Japanese General uh, Tomoyuki Yamashita. All right? Now, the interesting thing here is the story of the plane crash, because I've been doing some research. And as far as I can tell, this story is true. In other words, there is a kernel of truth to this Philippine origin for all of these fake bearer bonds. Now, what I find very interesting here is, number one, the contradictory statements again, that number one, these bonds are of very good quality, and number two, 
that they're in denominations that don't exist. All right. Now, I've run in, in my researches into an interesting phenomenon. This appears to be the principal tactic that was used by this breakaway tier of civilization in setting up this second tier of hidden finance based upon all of that looted Japanese gold during World War II. The scam is this. They issue legitimate bearer bonds that are somehow linked to this bullion. All right, But the bonds are issued with peculiarities. In other words, misspellings or in denominations that never existed, or there's some stylistic difference in the actual paper of the bond that distinguishes it from other bonds normally issued by that government. All right? The scam here is that these bonds can later be denied as counterfeit or fraudulent by the very issuing government or and the powers that be behind these bonds if they choose to do so. So in other words, what you have is a scam of bilking people out of billions of dollars and they can decide to honor their bonds or not. All right. Now there's no evidence that I've come across thus far in my research that suggests that the United States was involved in that activity. But I have run across evidence that the Japanese were. And interestingly enough, this story is the first bearer bond story that links now specifically to counterfeiting activity of not only bonds, but currency, specifically Japanese yen, German bonds, and the Argentine peso. All right. Now, to me, that again is possibly sending a subtle message. And one thing I want to point out here is that there is a theme that is emphasized in all of these Barabon stories thus far. And that is that the counterfeits are very good. All right. So in other words, we might be dealing, and this is pure speculation, we might be dealing with yet another continuation of something else that also stemmed from World War II, and that was Operation Bernhardt, which was that massive Nazi counterfeiting operation to counterfeit British pound notes. I've never encountered evidence, but I've long suspected that this operation was also counterfeiting securities. It was counterfeiting bonds of governments. It was counterfeiting corporate stock certificates and so on and so forth. I've suspected this for a very long time. We have an indicator in this article that whoever is doing this counterfeiting is now sending even more subtle messages that there is some sort of Japanese, German, Argentine connection. So in other words, I think again, folks, that these bearer bond stories are much more significant than the news media or the official spokesmen are letting on. I think they do represent a hidden tier of finance. I think in all likelihood, based on my research thus far, that in all likelihood some of these bonds are legitimate and what is happening is the bonds were issued in a peculiar fashion. They're issued in a peculiar style so that if necessary, their legitimacy could be denied later. This is the key to why I think we keep running into in these stories the fact that these bonds were issued in the 1930s. I think what has happened, and this again is pure speculation, although I'm finding a little evidence for it, I think that's what, what has happened is that these bonds were issued over the signature of Roosevelt's Treasury Secretary Henry Morgenthau, post-dated post -dated 1934. In other words, that the bonds are legitimate, but these, these peculiarities in the bonds were deliberately done so that they could later be denied as counterfeit and yet another scam perpetrated to collect and, and gather wealth. So in other words, we're dealing with a big, big story once again, folks. Now, related to that story, the Huffington Post has another article entitled Vatican Bank or Account Closed at J.P. Morgan, Image May Be Hurt. And this article goes on to 
to recount how the Vatican Bank's account at J.P. Morgan Chase in Italy was closed unilaterally by J.P. Morgan Chase because the Vatican was not living up to the standards of transparency that had been adopted by the European Union. Now, there's a hidden story here too. And the hidden story goes back to the 1980s to the collapse of Banco Ambrosiano, to the so-called suicide of Roberto Calvi under Blackfriars Bridge in, in London, England, the whole Michaela Sindona Franklin Bank scandal, and then of course the P2G uh, Loge Propaganda Due affair in Italy back in the 80s. All of this was tied together. And there is a little known aspect of this story in that the Vatican Bank, Banco Ambrosiano, and so on and so forth, were apparently also involved in laundering counterfeit securities. And guess what some of those securities were? They were bearer bonds. All right. So I think it's very interesting that at that time, the current pope was then, of course, Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger, who was the head of the Holy Office in the Vatican, the Congregation for the Propaganda, Propagation of the Faith, which is the official name of, of the Holy Inquisition. So in other words, that office still exists. All right, He was appointed to that office by the then Pope, John Paul II. All right, Ratzinger, it is interesting to note, all of this is happening now on his watch as, as the Pope. So I have this suspicion, and it's nothing more than a suspicion, folks, that we're going to see something come out that may eventually tie the Vatican to the contemporary bearer bonds scandals, because they were certainly involved in that activity back in the 1980s through, a, uh, and even the 70s, through a fellow by the name of uh, Eugène Cardinal Tisserand from France, all right, who also was the Vatican Archives archivist. He was the cardinal in charge of the Vatican Archives, and he was implicated in some of these uh, fraudulent securities laundering schemes. So anyway, the bearer bond story marches on, folks. Uh, I'll be keeping an eye on it, and in fact, I, I will be writing in the book once I get done with... Uh, the sequel to Babylon's Banksters, which should be in, in the coming month. I'll be writing on the Bearer Bonds scandal for another book uh, that I'm planning to do later this year, following up on that, because uh, I think I can now argue the case that we are dealing with a, a real hidden tier of finance and that we are indeed dealing with a manifestation of a partial manifestation of some sort of, of breakaway civilization financing mechanism. Anyway, that's it for Thursday, April 26, in the year of the apocalypse, 2012. And uh, I thank you all for listening, and we'll see you on the flip side. Bye-bye, and God bless everybody.